Good morning. Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. I hope everybody is enjoying uh, this weekend. Hope you all had a, just a beautifully blessed Easter Resurrection Day celebration. Yeah, last week we studied about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and what that means to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Those of us who have accepted Christ as our personal Savior, we have everlasting life in heaven with Jesus. God showed his love for each and every one of us by sacrificing his son and then raising him from the dead as a our Redeemer for our sins. So we are so grateful that God loved us so much that he would sacrifice his son. To go, oh, I'm about to step on your toes. Today, we're going to learn about Jesus going to heaven. That's referred to as the ascension. He ascends. Ascend means to go up, to rise up. He ascends to heaven, and he leaves for us a helper here. And that helper is known as the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit makes himself known to the disciples who, after... Jesus' resurrection began re began being referred to as apostles. I just learned that today. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the Holy Spirit appears to the disciples, also known as the apostles now. Um, and we're going to learn about that. We're going to learn about the Holy Spirit, who he is, what he does, what he did for them, and what he does for us. And so Jesus died on the cross. He was resurrected. And walked on earth with his disciples. We're going, to, we're going to learn today about that ascension to heaven. And when Jesus ascended to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit as a helper. And the Holy Spirit helps us today too. And when, unlike the disciples, when they learned of the Holy Spirit, little flames appeared on their heads. And um, that I have not experienced that. We're not promised that experience here on earth. And that's probably good. That might be a little... Startling. <laughs> it probably was startling to them. I imagine it was. Would you like to pray for us, please? I will. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we are so grateful for Easter and for all that Easter means to every Christian today. You loved us so much that you gave your only son for a sacrifice for sins that he never committed, but that we did. And we deserve the punishment, but you put it on your son. And through that, you gave us eternal life. And all we have to do is say, Lord, you are our personal Savior. And we believe that. You've made it easy for us, Father. And we are so grateful. Now be with us today as we learn about your Holy Spirit. This is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And today is about the Holy Spirit and how grateful we are that we have the Holy Spirit in our life. Because if we allow Him to, He will guide and direct all our thoughts, all our actions, and He will lead us in the life that He wants us to live. All we have to do is surrender to Him. So be with us today, prepare our hearts and minds, give the teachers wisdom to speak, and we just, again, thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Okay. So, we're going to read from the book of Acts, and we're going to start with Acts chapter 1. This is where the scriptures start after Jesus' death and resurrection. This is where it starts, when he has um, get made that sacrifice for us. So I'm going to start at ch Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days, 
and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. You know, during those 40 days, it was just not the apostle. He appeared to many, many people. That's true. That's true. Now, continuing in verse 4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And verse 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. In many days actually turned out to be 10 days before the Holy Spirit was ascended on the apostles. It continued in verse 9, it says, Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, angels who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Continuing with verse 12, Then they returned to Jerusalem. From the mount they called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, son, uh, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, although the, the number of names was about 120. So totally there were about 120 people in this large room. Men and brethren, the scripture had to be filled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry I have a question after we finish reading I'm going to start now in Acts, Acts 2 when the, Pente when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire one sat on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak to each other with other tongues or languages as the Spirit gave them utterance and today we hear uh, about people speaking in tongues and that they have to have an interpreter to understand what's being said. What is being referred to here, this was a holy day for the Jewish people, the day of Pentecost. And they were people from the Greek world, from the Arab world. So when the disciples started speaking in tongues, it was the Greek people could understand it because they heard it in Greek. The Arabs heard it in uh, Arabic. So it was not the same type of uh, utterance that you hear talked about in the modern church today. Now it's time for questions. Oh, yeah. I get to ask them. 
question number one. I have a question. Oh, okay. Uh, when we read in the scriptures, we read, we, we spoke twice about Judas. And Judas was the man, of course, who betrayed Jesus, who gave him up to the soldiers. And, and ultimately, he was killed because Judas gave him up. Right. But it also said in the scriptures that Judas was there in the upper room with the disciples. That was a different Judas. Judas was a very common name oh, okay, good. for the Jewish people. The Jewish, or Judas, it referred to in the one verse that Julia brought up, mm -hmm. in the upper room. The son of James. Is right. So you answered your own question. Okay, but I just wanted to make sure. Then, then later, where we talked about Judas, who became a, a guide to those Judas of us. Judas Iscariot. Different Judas. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So it, should I just go ahead and ask the rest of the questions? No. I get to ask the questions. Okay. Question time. All right. What did the disciples realize was going to be a big job? Well, their, their job became to continue Jesus' ministry, to spread the good news of Jesus' life. So imagine how, how, how they must have been feeling. They didn't expect all these events to take place, and they were distressed when he was crucified, and they were surprised when he wasn't in, in the tomb. And, and Jesus had spent time with them teaching them, but now it was dawning on them after all of that it's their job to go and teach in Jesus' place. And their leader just went up yeah. on a cloud. This is, th went. There's that too. So, so, yes. Yeah, they were a little taken back about what, was going, what their responsibilities were and how they were going to accomplish it. But these were, these were people who studied the Word of God. And the Word of God, as it was written up until that point, was the Old Testament. And, and the books in the Old Testament we're familiar with. We're familiar with the prophecies in the Old Testament or the statements saying what was going to happen in the future. And they knew in Isaiah chapter 55, 8 through 9, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And what that all means is that the, the disciples may have had some confusion. They may have wondered exactly how they were going to pull all this off. But they knew from Jesus, and they knew from Scripture, that they didn't always have to understand how this was going to happen. Their faith allowed them to go forward and inspired them, in fact, to go forward and do God's work, to do Jesus' work, even though they maybe didn't fully understand how that would happen. It also reassures us that God will give us yep. maybe difficult tasks, mm -hmm. but if he does, he will give us the ability to accomplish those tasks. That's true. No matter how difficult. And that's what the apostles here were faced with. But we're sure that when God asks big things, he's going to do big things in our life. That's true. Okay, question two. What did Jesus say the comforter was? Well, the comforter is a, is a word. I used the word helper before for the Holy Spirit. Yep. And, they, and Jesus told the disciples that he would be sending a helper, a, a comforter. Um, he, I think he may have known that in addition to maybe a little bit of, of confusion, the apostles might actually be missing Jesus. And there would be a comforter, somebody to help them understand and, and to feel, feel good about. And you know what's amazing? Mm. We have that same comforter. We do. If we, we believe do. in Jesus, we have the same comforter in we our do. life. We do. What happened... Or not what happened, what appeared on the disciples' head. Sometimes my glasses slip and things get fuzzy. Uh, uh, the Bible describes a flame of fire as if a flame of fire on their head. It could burn your hair. Well, it didn't. Well, it could. It could. 
Okay. Okay. Question four. What did the disciples just go out and start telling people? Why didn't the disciples just go out and start telling people about Jesus? They didn't. Uh, they, they, they delayed a bit before they started telling people. And, and sometimes action without a good understanding of how that action will impact the overall plan, that can be a, that can be a bad idea. Yeah. If you remember earlier, I said it was 10 days that they spent in prayer uh, in this upper room before the Holy Spirit appeared. Right. So these 10 days of prayer, constantly praying, was in preparation right. to, to preparing their hearts to be able to receive the Holy Spirit and then going out and accomplishing what Jesus wants them to do. And that is uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of prayer, our prayer. And that's what Jesus taught, and that's what the apostles did. And that time they spent in prayer, knowing what their mission was, knowing, understanding what it was Jesus told them to do, even if he didn't have a full picture of how they would do that. What did the disciples tell the people to do? To repent for their sins and to be baptized. Pretty simple message. Simple message. So they spent the time in prayer. And prayer is that conversation that we have with God. That's our privilege. And that's our responsibility. We pray for each other. We pray for our communities. And we pray to the best possible source for help to God. And that opens our minds. It opens our hearts. It, it, that's the way God tells us what he wants us to be doing. That's the way God changes our heart. Sometimes he helps us to forgive people that are hard for us to forgive. And all of that comes through prayer. That's what they did. And what happened on, the, on that day? Uh, 3,000 people got baptized. Well, a real simple message. Very simple message. Say to, tell God that you are sorry for the things that you've done that you know hurt him. The things that you've done that you know were not pleasing to him. That's repentance. You pray to God and you say that you're sorry. And then you ask God to help you to not do that again. And of these 3,000 people, not all of them could read and write. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them were... Jews who practice the temple tradition, mm -hmm. but a lot probably weren't Jews. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they accepted the simple message of salvation. So when you talk to your friends that are not Christian, it doesn't have to be a compli complicated no. message. It can be very simple. Very simple. You know, Jesus Christ died for your sins. We are all sinners. There's two kinds of people on this earth, saved sinners and lost sinners. To be a saved sinner, you accept Christ as your personal Savior. It's a simple message. I know it's hard to do, uh, but if you pray about it beforehand, mm -hmm. God will give you the words That's and the right. wisdom to do it. That's right. It only gets hard when we try to make it too complicated. Absolutely. All right. All right. So that's our lesson for today. We are very excited to tell you that we are trying to make some plans to get the in-person children's ministry back up, up to speed. So talk to your parents about it. Talk to your friends about it. We need help. We need people to be teachers. Um, some things are still going to change from before the pandemic, and, and so we'll have some jobs for people to do, and it'll be really important that we get them to do that. So yeah. um, let everybody you know, whether they go to our church or they don't, that we're getting ready to ramp up the children's ministry in person again. We're very excited about that. We've missed you all so much. It's been over a year, and that's, that's just too long. I can't even begin to imagine how tall some of you have gotten. And so we're very much looking forward to seeing you and um, talk about it. Please pray for us. Please pray for children's ministry. 
Please pray for Rudy and I to have great wisdom, or at least enough wisdom, if we can't have great wisdom about how to do this, and, and helpers. Um, we pray to the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, to send us helpers for children's ministry as Amen. well. Amen. Amen. And, pray, and prayer, and lots and lots of prayer for us. So have a good week. We'll see you this way next week. We're probably not going to be able to do in person until the first couple weeks of May, because as you can see, we're still we're still in Texas. But we we are making plans to come back, and um, we're looking forward to seeing you. All right. Amen. 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 Should we pray? You can lead us in okay. closing prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. We're so excited to come back and face to face with our kids. We miss them. We know they've been in your good care, and still we miss them, Lord. And we're looking forward to being a, a family, a church family, that can actually see each other face to face. And um, until then, keep us in your word, Lord. Keep us in your will. Keep your Holy Spirit guiding us, comforting us, and leading us in the direction you have us go. We pray this in Jesus' name, and then we say, Amen. Amen. Bye-bye.